I'm Amy the Bunny Lady, and this is my partner, Elusive, Ellie for short. High five. <laughs> high five? No? You're not going to give me a high five? There we go. There we go. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about some of the mistakes I made when bonding Ellie with her partner, Teddy Bear, and what you can do to not make those mistakes, to avoid the same mistakes. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We give tips and tricks for how to make sure you have a happy and healthy bunny in your home. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscription button and the notification bell next to it so you never miss any of our weekly videos. And if you are interested in more merch, like my Hop To It shirt here, <laughs> I do have a Teespring store that you can check out. Uh, anything that you get from the store it does help to support the channel, so I do really appreciate it if you hop on over there and check it out. When you first start bonding your rabbits, you really want to think about the time of day that you're bonding them. So I made the mistake of making their first bonding session in the evening. Now the reason this was a mistake is because in the evening, rabbits are naturally going to be more active. In the morning and the evening is the times, the times of day where rabbits are the most active, which means they'll be, they'll be more likely to be agitated with this strange rabbit. What I should have done, and what I recommend for you, is to make their first few bonding sessions in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> so the middle of the afternoon is the time of day where rabbits are more likely to just feel like chilling out. They just want to go to sleep because middle of the day is rabbit nap time. <laughs> so this way they'll be less likely to be aggressive towards each other and more likely to just, they just want to chill out and go back to sleep. So that makes it a good time of day to introduce them and get them used to being around the other rabbit. That doesn't mean that every single bonding session should be in the middle of the afternoon. In fact, before you put them together full time, you do want to make sure that they have experience with each other at different times of day. So make sure that they have spent some hours together in the morning. Make sure they have spent some hours together in the evening. This way you'll know how they'll react at the times of day when they are more active, when they're more likely to get agitated or aggressive. But when you first start starting to bond them, you want to go for the middle of the afternoon. That'll be much more likely to start your rabbits off on the right foot. I also made the mistake of starting my rabbits bonding sessions too soon. So basically I brought Teddy Bear home and then the very next day I started bonding them together because they had such a good first interaction at the shelter, I thought that it would be okay to start the bonding sessions at home, at least for short periods of time. However, this ended up stressing Teddy out quite a bit. He was finding himself suddenly in a new environment. He didn't know what to expect. And then all of a sudden he's placed into an area with another strange bunny that, okay, he met her once, but he does not really that familiar. Now he's in a place where she feels a lot more comfortable. So that ended up causing a lot of anxiety for Teddy during those first couple of days. What I should have done was given him time to acclimate to like his new environment for a week or so. Give him time to relax a little bit before starting the bonding sessions. When you bring your first rabbit home, give them at least a few days to start feeling safe, feeling happy in their environment before then putting them together and starting the bonding sessions. Now it is okay to put them in the same room together so that they can start to get used to the smell of the other rabbit, but wait a few days before actually starting to put them together in a neutral area. This next mistake I could have avoided very easily by just doing a little bit of planning ahead, and that is making sure that you have all of the necessary supplies ready for when you're bonding your rabbits. When I brought Teddy home, I did have enough extra supplies for him and his own separate enclosure, but I didn't really think about all of the extra supplies that I was also going to need for the neutral space. I had planned on using the bathroom and didn't think I would need a, another extra X-Pen to use to, for their bonding space, but quickly found that it was not all that convenient actually to use the bathroom and it was going to be much better to use the space with an X-Pen in the living room. But I needed to wait until I ordered another X-Pen in order to do that. 
Same with having extra litter boxes. I didn't realize the size that I needed to get so that both of them could fit into the litter box together. So I ended up needing, I ended up starting by using cardboard boxes with puppy pee pads on the bottom so that the pee wouldn't end up leaking through the cardboard. But I had to then get a bunch of extra large litter boxes for them to use in their neutral space. So I needed to think about these supplies to use in the neutral area that I, I didn't really think about that ahead of time, even though I should have. Another mistake I made when starting to bond my rabbits was trying to multitask too much. So especially at the beginning stages, you really want to give all of your attention to your rabbits. I made the mistake, I was trying to film my rabbits at the same time as I was bonding them, and it ended up distracting me a lot from paying attention to my rabbits, which can be very dangerous. It turned out well for these guys, but it is something that I really shouldn't have been worrying so much about filming them while I was bonding them. In the end, I ended up not filming as much after the first week or so because I realized how distracting it was and how it could potentially put the rabbits in a different, a dangerous situation. I was able to give my rabbits a little bit more attention after I stopped worrying about whether or not I was going to get everything I needed for a video. <laughs> this also includes things like trying to multitask while doing work while bonding your rabbits. It can end up distracting you so much that they end up doing something or trying to hurt each other while you're distracted and you might not be able to react as quickly. So especially during the first few sessions when you're not sure how your rabbits will interact with each other, it is actually important to make sure that you give them your full attention. So as a general rule, I believe it is much more important for training rabbits to use positive reinforcement and to avoid any kind of negative reinforcement at all. So I was kind of against this idea of using a squirt bottle as a tool for bonding. So the idea is if you start to notice your rabbit is just starting their aggressive behavior, so they haven't gotten into a full-fledged fight, but maybe they are like just starting to lunge or just starting to nip the other rabbit, you squirt them on the forehead and that should get them to stop and then clean themselves instead. It's obviously not a positive reinforcement tool, so I tried to avoid it. But I did find that in bonding, Ellie would go after Teddy sometimes, lunge at him, and I ended up finding that using the squirt bottle was in fact a useful tool for preventing this behavior in Ellie. It was the only thing I could do to essentially teach her that what she was doing wasn't nice and she needed to stop. And even though in most cases, especially between a person and a rabbit, I would not recommend using a squirt bottle as a tool for training. In this case, you're using it as a tool to protect the other rabbit. So I learned that it's actually okay to use. Like you're not actually hurting your rabbit. It's just a little squirt on their head and it just makes them stop and clean. You are protecting your second rabbit. You're not hurting anybody. So I found that it is actually a very useful tool to use when bonding rabbits. And even though it's technically a form of negative reinforcement, it is still a potentially useful tool to use when bonding your rabbits. On the flip side, I realized I needed to use a lot more positive reinforcement to help Teddy Bear be less afraid of Ellie. So Teddy Bear is a super anxious rabbit. The first time me and Teddy met at the shelter, he uh, was he uh, growled and swatted at me because he was just so afraid when he saw me coming to him. So he already had some anxiety issues. So then when I brought him home and Ellie was showing some territorial problems, he then became very afraid of Ellie. So basically any time Ellie would go anywhere near him, he would immediately run off and panic. I needed to use more positive reinforcement to get him to understand that she's okay, she can be a friend. So what I did was I would, I would start petting and then beckon Teddy to come and like put her nose up against Teddy's. And then I would pet them there, just pet them together nose to nose or in some cases side by side for 30 seconds or so and then move my hands off to see what happens. At first, Teddy would basically immediately run away as soon as I removed my hands. But the more I did this, the more he would start to associate Ellie coming up right next to him with this positive association of being pet because he loves to be pet and I would continue doing that over and over again for half an hour to an hour for a number of days at a time. And more and more, he started to become more comfortable around her because of the positive reinforcement that I was giving them. 
So it's important to not underestimate your part in helping your rabbits get along. Don't underestimate the power of petting your rabbits next to each other. That's probably the most useful tool in bonding rabbits. Like, do it for half an hour, even an hour at a time. Just pet your rabbits next to each other. You can let them separate and then come back together again, but just pet your rabbits next to each other. It's really important. I also found that as I was bonding my rabbits, I was not prepared for setbacks. If one day went well, I would expect the next day to go well too. But that's not always how it goes. Sometimes they'll have a really good day and they'll be happy together, they'll be sleeping next to each other, and then the next day they're chasing the whole day and it's just like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what should I do differently? When really it's just, just keep going. It's That just happens sometimes. So it's important to make sure that you don't let your guard down. At one point they could be doing well together, but you know, 15 minutes later, they are fighting and you need to make sure that you, you keep being vigilant and are there to break up any potential fights that happen. Because the last thing that you want is for your rabbits to start fighting and hurt each other. It will feel like an emotional roller coaster while your rabbits do well and then and then they hate each other and then they're doing well and then they hate each other. But eventually as you keep going, it'll become more and more they will be okay with each other and then they'll start to love each other. <laughs> A major mistake that I made was not cleaning up here well enough. So Teddy and Ellie were actually starting to do really well in the neutral area. So I decided it was time to give them an overnight together and then clean up here and put them back in the space hoping that, you know, that neither will get territorial up here. The problem was I did not clean thoroughly enough. Once they got back, they did okay for a little bit, but then once Ellie started recognizing where she was, she got very territorial and she started attacking Teddy and I had to separate them again. It got bad enough that I actually had to go back almost to square one and start bonding them again because Teddy started getting really scared of Ellie again. So you do want to make sure when you put them back in the original enclosure in their forever together space <laughs> that you do a lot of cleaning. And clean everything as much as you can. Now it's best to use a vinegar and water solution. The vinegar does a really good job at removing the scent of any rabbits, so any kind of scent from their urine or just any scent from them. And then clean everything, like spray vinegar onto the floors, spray it onto the walls, clean the gates of the enclosure that you use, clean any furniture in the room, clean all of their food bowls out, just everything gets cleaned and sprayed and wiped down as much as you can. You'll even want to reorganize the furniture a little bit. So I, I have uh, my bed, I have a loft bed here that I have over top of their home base. And I moved that aside. I rearranged all of the furniture in the room. Hopefully the second time around, Ellie would not start to be territorial again. And once I did all of this work to clean the space and reorganize the space and make it seem totally unfamiliar to either rabbit, that ended up working and now they live happily up here. Ellie has been more or less a free roam rabbit for a while now. So she's used to having a lot of space to exercise and run around and just be a curious, happy bunny. So when you're looking at traditional advice for bonding rabbits, most of the time they recommend starting in a small space. And even once you get to the larger space, you're really, you're putting your rabbits in a pen sized space for a couple days at a time. While for most rabbits this will work out, what I forgot to take into consideration was Ellie's free roam lifestyle. After a number of hours in the pen, she starts to get frustrated. She starts to want more space. She wants to get out because that's what she's used to. So she ended up taking that frustration out on Teddy. So if I wanted this to work, I needed both rabbits to be able to be happy in the space together. So I needed to find a way to give them more space while still being in enclosed enough that I would be able to intervene if something were to go wrong. So what I did was I got two large X pens and I increased the space as much as I could. This way, even though it's not completely free room, it's still significantly more space than you could get if you have just one X pen. And since the first instance of putting them together up here didn't work very well, I actually kept them together in these two large X pens for an entire week 
before then moving them back up here because she still had enough space to run around and binky about and be happy it ended up working out whereas if i still had them in just one x pen there wouldn't have been enough space and she would have ended up getting frustrated and taking it out on teddy because he's the one who's there <laughs> the main mistake that i made that actually made the process take almost twice as long as it would have is I tried rushing my rabbits. Obviously this isn't a conscious choice I made, but I was impatient with them. My sister was getting married about a month after I started bonding my rabbits and I wanted them to basically be together and be able to, you know, be able to leave them alone without worrying about them when I was away for the day for her wedding. So instead of taking my time during all the steps of the bonding process, I ended up rushing it a little bit. As soon as I saw that they were starting to do well together, I increased the time much faster than I should have. And while this ended up being okay in the neutral area, I didn't spend the time to test out how they interacted with each other at different times of day. I didn't spend as much time in the different steps as I should have. I only gave them one night together thinking that 24 hours would be enough and then I could put them up into their forever together territory. This did not end up going as well as I wanted it to. so. The not cleaning it well enough combined with them not having as much space the first time combined with just this brushing it a little bit, being a little impatient with the process caused them to basically have to go back to square one. So instead of having them together in that month, basically I had to separate them for a couple days and then start over again after the wedding. Whereas this could have been avoided if I was just patient, let things go smoothly, and then they probably could have been bonded maybe a week after that. Instead, it took another month. So the most important thing is to make sure you take your time with bonding. Spend more time on each step as you think you need. Wait until they seem to be totally okay with each other. And don't be afraid to take a step back if you think that, you know, maybe you moved on too quickly. So that is the number one mistake that I made. And I really recommend that you make sure that you are very patient with your rabbits. Don't rush this because in the end, trying to rush it is just going to double the amount of time that it takes. I know bonding is an intimidating and overwhelming process, but even making all of these mistakes, I now have these two bunnies living happily together, so you can do it too. Do, you, do all the research that you can. With enough time, your rabbits can also be bonded. If you want more information on the bonding process, I do have a Bonding 101 video. I will be coming out with more bonding videos in the future, such as how to bond a free roam rabbit, like I mentioned with Ellie. Thank you so much for watching, and I do hope that we will see you next week.